Hello there, welcome back to this YouTube channel. My name is Anubhav Swami and today in this video I'm going to be talking to you about next generation firewall in Azure. We have added three big features for our cloud users. Uh, first one is support for bigger instances like D4 and D5. And we have also enabled support for Firepower Device Manager, which is our local or on-box manager for next generation firewall. We have also added support for uh, pay-as-you-go model if you want to deploy firewalls for a couple of weeks, couple of months, instead of procuring permanent license, you can go for pay as you go model as well. Now, if you go to Marketplace, you will find Next Generation Firewall. And after release 6.5, we give you option of deploying these firewalls as D4 V2 or D5 V2 instances, which will give you higher number of vCPUs, bigger memory, and you can now go up to eight interfaces on your next generation firewall in Azure. The moment you deploy your firewall using a default marketplace template, it will give you option of picking between Firepower Management Center or Firepower Device Manager. If you select Firepower Device Manager and you deploy your configuration or deploy your firewall, uh, by default, when, you, when your device will come up, it, it will be available for FDM access. And for accessing your device, you need to use Management Interface IP address. Now, I have a short demo as well. In this demo, what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy next generation firewall and I will pick biggest instance, which is standard D5 V2 instance. And once my firewall is up, I'm going to use uh, Azure portal to create new interfaces and add those new interfaces to my firewall. And at the end of the demo, I'm going to use uh, Firepower Device Manager to access my firewall, and I will show you how all the additional interfaces will look look on the device uh, manager. And you can start using those interfaces in your virtual network. So without wasting time, I will quickly go ahead and log into my Azure portal, and I will show you how to deploy these firewalls quickly. I'm presently in Azure portal and I will click on create resources and I will go to marketplace. Now in marketplace I'm going to look for Cisco and you can see that there is a new offering available there which is in preview right now but soon it is going to be available for public uh, and now what I'm doing is I'm going to be uh, deploying firewall uh, one and in licensing I've selected BYOL. Uh, I'm giving my username uh, and then my passwords. Uh, this deployment is pretty simple. It is going to ask you a lot of questions related to your device. Now I'm giving my host name for next generation firewall. I'll give my password as well. Now this is where this is where I will pick between my managers. So this drop down menu is going to give me option of FMC as well as Firepower Device Manager. From this menu, I've selected FDM. I'm putting this firewall in a new resource group. So I'm going to create it, and I'm going to be putting this device in East US zone. Now on the second page, I need to pick my uh, instance, so I'm going to be using D5 instance storage account. I will be using a new storage account, and it is going to be standard LRS type of storage account. I'll click OK on this screen, and then I will provide public IP address because that public IP address is going to be used for managing this device from outside. So I'm going to be picking up standard IP. You can go with basic IP as well, but I, for this demo, I'm just picking standard IP and um, static IP. Now I've given my DNS label as well. Now it's time for me to create a 
create a virtual network in which I'm going to be placing this device. So I'm going to be creating a new uh, VNet. I can put it in an existing VNet as well. But for this demo, uh, I'm going to be putting it in a new virtual network. I'll click OK on this screen and in the next screen I'm going to be de deciding which interface will go to what subnet. So first interface which is my next hero is going to be in management subnet, second one is going to be in diagnostic subnet. Uh, then I have gig 0 slash 0, I'm putting this in outside subnet and uh, gig 0 slash 1 is going to be in inside subnet. I'll click OK. I'll click OK again. Now it is going to run validation in the background to see if my configuration is correct and everything is unique. I'm not trying to uh, put anything which is overlapping with any other device. So I'll click OK on this one and then I will enter my contact information uh, and once uh, that information is available there I'm going to click on create. So now uh, deployment for this virtual instance is initiated. You can see on the right hand side the deployment is in progress right now. I can click on it and I can see what exactly is uh, being deployed. So let me show you what exactly is being deployed. If I click on that, you will see that it is deploying a lot of resources in my virtual network. So this process is going to take some time, uh, maybe around five minutes to deploy this firewall. Uh, once your firewall is deployed, uh, you, you, you can see that uh, it is deployed. Now I will go in my resource group and I will look for my resource group as well to see what kind of resources are deployed as part of this deployment. You can see a lot of things were deployed uh, like storage account, my firewall. So I'll click on this firewall and you can see by default we have assigned public IP address or not assigned but mapped a public IP address on first NIC of the device. And using this IP address I'm going to be managing my firewall. Uh, I'm going to show you my virtual network as well. If, if you look at subnets, I currently have four subnets. By default, firewall is deployed with four subnets, but I'm going. what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add three more subnets to my virtual network, web, app, and database, so that I can create new interfaces in each subnet, and then I'm going to attach those new subnets or uh, new interfaces to my firewall. So um, app subnet is being created right now and then I will create database subnet as well. So with earlier release of next generation firewall prior to 6.5 we only had option of adding four interfaces and all out of those four interfaces two interfaces were data interfaces and apart from that all the other interfaces were management and diagnostic interfaces. So now I'm adding a new interface uh, for my web subnet. So I'm going to be putting this uh, NIC um, in web subnet. So this is NIC4 for my device. From this drop down menu I have selected my VNet, I've selected web subnet, static IP address I'm going to assign static IP address for this particular interface. Um, I'm putting it in 4.4 .4 subnet and then I'm putting it in my existing resource group. Similarly, I will create two more interfaces, app and database. So once these interfaces are there in my resource group, I can quickly shut down my firewall and add those interfaces as well. Now I'm showing you how to add uh, another NIC um, uh, for uh, application subnet and again I'm performing same process where I'm selecting um, my uh, resource group, I'm selecting my subnet, I'm selecting my VNet, I'm giving static IP address on the interface, I'm putting it to my, putting it in my existing VNet and I've also specified my location as East US 2. Now it's time for me to create third interface uh, which 
is going to be in my database subnet. So by default, firewall came up with four interfaces and I've added three more interfaces to my VNet, but still I have not attached those new interfaces to my firewall. So these new interfaces are not getting utilized at this point of time. So I'm going to be creating my last interface, which is my data interface. And once I have all these three interfaces available in my resource group, I'm going to be shutting down my firewall and then I will put all these interfaces or attach these interfaces to my firewall. So now I have three free interfaces. I'll go back to my resource group. In this resource group, I'm going to be first of all making sure that I enable IP forwarding on all the new interfaces. If I will not enable IP forwarding on those interfaces, those interfaces will not participate in forwarding traffic. Since these interfaces will be attached to the firewall, it is a requirement that you enable IP forwarding on all the new VNICs. So I have enabled um, it on NIC4, uh, NIC5, and NIC6. These are new interfaces not attached to any instance at the moment. So I have enabled it uh, on all the three interfaces. Now uh, what I will do is I will go back to my resource group and I will find my firewall. Uh, you can see that I have my firewall there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shut down my firewall at this point of time because now intention is to add new interfaces to my firewall so I'm going to shut down my firewalls once my firewall is shut down I have option of adding new interfaces to it I can go back to my firewall click on networking from networking you can see there is an option of attaching interfaces from this drop down menu uh, I'll go ahead and attach interface 4 5 and 6 to my device and you can notice that I have not attached um, uh, NSG to these new interfaces. I can attach NSGs as well if I want to control traffic at NSG level as well. But for this particular demo, I'm just attaching NIC4, NIC5, and NIC6 to my firewall. Once these NICs are attached, I will switch on my firewall again and I will wait for a couple of minutes so that my firewall is up and running and then I will try to access my firewall using local device manager known as firepower device manager okay now my interfaces are attached now is the time to go ahead and switch it on switch my firewall on so I'm going to start off my firewall now this process is going to take a couple of minutes uh, once firewall is up you can then use public IP address which is there on the firewall to access it so, so you can see that my firewall is now started. I'm going to use uh, this public IP address for management of this device. Now, you can use your browser. First of all, you can, you can try and do a SSH to the device and make sure that you have um, configure management local command uh, there. Uh, but that is an extra extra step that I'm doing here to just to make sure that that command is there. Uh, when you selected FDM from the drop down menu in the marketplace, this command got added automatically as part of a day zero config or user data. Uh, now you can see um, that I'm going to be putting this public IP address in my browser and I will try to access it okay I have access to firepower device manager now in this window or on this window I'm going to be using my admin account uh, and I will try to log in for uh, this particular demo I'm not going to uh, activate uh, license so uh, I, I can just enable 
eval license evalu uh, evaluation license you can see that uh, there are other interfaces as well which are displayed on the device itself so now you have gig 0 slash 0 through 0 slash 4 uh, sometimes you might not see all the interfaces there so you might have to go back to interfaces page and on the interface page you have to run scan inventory um, uh, to see all the interfaces so this is how you add additional interfaces to the device and you can access your uh, firewall using firepower device manager so now we are back on the dashboard of firewall you can see all the new interfaces are up you can put workloads behind these interfaces and you can protect your multiple submits i hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching